Hey, thanks for tuning into my YouTube channel. This is Mark from Northeast Photographic. Uh, this is the first video that I'm making for this channel. I'm hoping to do a lot more just to kind of um, do some maybe some how-tos, some tips and tricks. I want to talk about the darkroom. I mean, think of it as an extension of our podcast, Scary Stories to Tell in the Darkroom. Uh, but it's mostly going to be focusing on just kind of more more visual aspects that I can actually show you guys as opposed to just talk about uh, podcasts not being the best medium for talking about photography sometimes. Um, today's video is one I wanted to do for a long time. This is a really simple video. Um, basically, I'm just going to show you guys the editing steps that I take when I edit simple scans uh, to make them into pro scans. Okay, let's define our terms here. Uh, so, Northeast Photographic, we're a film lab, and we have two scan levels for you guys. We have simple scans, and we have pro scans. Simple scans, all of the adjustments are done in our Fuji Frontier scanners. And then with pro scans, we have additional adjustments that are done in the, our editing software, which is typically Lightroom and Photoshop. Um, so there is a resolution difference as well, although with simple scans, of course, you can uh, pay a little extra to have that pro scan resolution applied to it. Otherwise, there's really no difference between the files. It's just a matter of, the, the, the fact is that simple scans, they need a little bit of a nudging, maybe a little push over the edge to be a finished file that I would say is um, what I would consider like client deliverable. Um, the process is really easy, uh, but the steps for editing film scans is a little bit different than the steps that I apply when I edit digital files. Digital files, um, I like to think of as a, a more transformative process. You're, you're starting from a really, really basic original and you're transforming it into something that's deliverable. For a film scan, it's got a lot of the characteristics baked in, uh, but you just need to kind of nudge it here and there uh, to push it over the edge. You use a couple different tools, mostly focusing on the black point and the white point, um, as well as uh, even different sharpening protocols, depending on, uh, depending on what uh, scanner it comes from. So today we're going to be focusing on scans that come from the Fuji Frontier scanner. Um, I personally use Adobe software. I think that it's the best fit for most users, especially most users that are going to be interacting with other photographers. Now, let's say you're a Capture One user or you have Affinity software, anything like that. That's totally fine. The tools are going to be the same. They might have a different name, they might be in a different place. But uh, what I'm doing is like Photoshop 5.0 easy. I mean, it's really, it could be done in the Levels tool, it could be done in the Curves tool. Um, and I'm just using the Lightroom controls because it's easiest, uh, and I think most people are probably using Lightroom. Um, so I'm going to jump over to Lightroom now, and I'll show you guys kind of uh, how I make this happen. Thanks for watching. Okay, now we're in the computer, and we're ready to edit. I have a few color rolls here and a black and white roll. I'm going to show you how to edit the black and white roll first because I think it has the tools uh, in the most simplified way and it's a good illustration of what we want to do here. So first thing you want to do with a black and white roll is select them all and hit V, which will desaturate the slightly warm tone that they have straight out of the frontier. Uh, now let's pick a image. Let's just go with this one. Uh, so this was shot with my Rolleiflex. Uh, it's got a lens from the 1950s. It's kind of low contrast. Um, you can see it was flaring here. Um, this film is Delta 400. Uh, it's probably overexposed a little bit. You know, it's got some issues. Um, but that's pretty typical of a simple scan order. Let's just get it to a neutral point. Now, we use the tools a little differently. We're not going to use exposure, contrast, highlight, shadow to make this, uh, to improve this, this particular image. Instead, we're going to read the histogram. I almost never do this with digital files, but I always do it with my film scans. So you can see, we are not at our, we are not at our clipping point in the black area, and we are not at our clipping point in the white area. We want to be. So I'm going to use the white and the black slider to get us there, and let's show the before and after and see the difference. So I'm going to find my white point. You can see I found my white point because the triangle lit up there. And now I'm going to find my black point, and we're there. Okay. So I'm now like, because I was looking at my histogram before, I wasn't really monitoring the image aesthetically with my eye, uh, but let's look at it now before and after. I'm gonna hit Y and it'll show us that. Already I see a totally, a totally big difference, even though it might be subtle to you. Once you edit a lot of files, you'll notice that this is just kind of gray and a little lifeless, a little flat. This is sort of just a proof sta stage, whereas this is much closer to what you wanna, wanna actually deliver as a final file. I'm seeing, 
snappier contrast overall, and and I think that we can even go a little further to uh, improve that. Again, I'm not going to mess with contrast. I mean, I could. I could just kind of make more contrast happen, but I really just think it blocks up the blacks and blows out the whites when I do that. So what I'm going to do is go to clarity, and I'm going to compensate for an older lens by adding a little bit of micro contrast. And, and I really do mean just like a little bit. So let's start with 10. I see a big difference there. Maybe you didn't. Let's go back to zero. OK, look at the tones here in the middle with this gray kind of metal door thing and then the greenhouse itself. Let's add 10 again. It just becomes much more dynamic. I mean, the blacks really snap and the whites get to, I mean, they don't blow out, but they get to a much better point. So again, looking at this, lifeless sort of gray, neutrally tones, everything's like a little bit lifted versus a image with more dynamic tones, more blacks, more whites, and kind of what you would expect from um, more of a final file. Now you can keep editing this to your preference. There's no rules here, but this is just how I approach a film scan versus a digital file. You're just working with the histogram more than you would um, uh, typically with digital camera images to kind of normalize the tones, especially out of a scanner like the Fuji Frontier. Uh, let's do one more black and white scan and kind of approach it the same way. Let's do one that's more severely uh, flared out. So this one's really low contrast, probably a little overexposed. You can see I was shooting right into the sun with a lens from the 50s. Never a good idea. So this is a big gap that we're seeing between the highlights and shadow, or I mean, uh, I should say between the black and the true black here on the histogram. So let's just bring that all the way down. That helped a lot. You know, that kind of did block up the shadows a little bit, but it kind of gave us a true black. You always want what I would consider an anchor point with your uh, with your tones. And so I want to increase the micro contrast a little bit, so I'm going to add more clarity than before. I'm going to do 15 points. And you can just see the difference in the wood tones there. So let's go zero. Okay. And now let's go 15. I think it just made a big difference. Um, this is, again, this is like not making huge changes. This is not really transformative. It's just more nudging it over the finish line. You can see kind of blase, um, I don't know if that's even the right thing to say about it, but it's just kind of gray here versus dynamic here. That's what you want from a black and white image. So let's move on to color. So this is a good roll for us to work on. This is also shot in my Rolly 2.8D. E. Again, old lens, but I used Fuji 400H and I exposed it the way that you normally do, the way I certainly recommend with 400H. I think I probably exposed it at ISO 100 or 200. Um, nice pictures of cows. This was last summer. They're kind of, uh, I, I would say they're not like exceptional in any way, but uh, let's see what we can do. This is a good one here. So the exposure is pretty fine. The color is where I want it to be. Um, but let's massage it to a finished point. Again, looking at my histogram, not seeing that I'm hitting those clipping points. So let's get there. Take the black slider down, take the white slider up, and we're clipping, and let's hit Y and see the difference. The big difference I see here is, again, these gray kind of lifeless um, tones versus more dynamic, more contrast. Um, it's not contrasty, but it, it <coughs> it's what you should expect from a modern film. It does compensate a little bit just for the lens being old. But again, we can further do that by adding in a little bit of micro contrast. Uh, now, I don't know if I said this before, but I would never add micro contrast or clarity to pro scans. Um, when I edit pro scans for clients, I'm following their own aesthetic profile and I'm just using these tools in the tone uh, in the tone window. That, and sometimes I do use exposure contrast highlight shadow. It's more rare. Again, this is more about nudging it. Um, but if you do need to make a global fix, you know, there's no rules here. Nobody's going to come after you. So feel free to do it. But what I'm saying is you can go from this to this with just these simple tools, blacks, whites, a little tiny bit of clarity. We can even turn it off. And honestly, the difference isn't that great. Um, with an image like this, something I would watch out for, um, this is a little bit, you know, uh, maybe the, the 2.0 version of this class, but looking at the whites up here, um, it's going to, 
be a little bit close to paper white. Um, the roller lens is a vignetting a little bit over here. You can see the RGB percent percentages under the histogram. So 95, 94, 95 versus the center, which is 97, 98, uh, nine, nine, yeah, basically 98. Um, I wouldn't want these white tones on a piece of paper to match the paper white, which is right next to them. You kind of want like an edge there. Um, we're being helped by the vignette a little bit, but just to watch out for that, you can nudge off the whites a little bit and bring that back down. Now we're at a good 97 at the brightest point and 93 at the edges here. So that that's good. That's like that's a little bit more safe. Um, and from here, with an image like this, you can go and make, you know, more global edits. If I was gonna, if this image was like really, really important to me, I might go as far as to get the magic wand out. That's where I would use exposure like a little bit more if I just wanted to call more attention to my cow friends here, my bovine, bovine uh, buddies. I might just kind of paint them in a little bit brighter and then adjust as, sort of as needed just that area. I like that you can be really specific with a tool like that. And again, let's look at it before and after. I mean, I just think, you know, you make subtle changes to bring it to from proof to final. And uh, you can do these things pretty quick. Okay, so let's try another image with a more severe uh, underexposure. Um, so in these images, I was shooting my Hi6 Mod 2 with Portra 160 and I was underexposing by about a half a stop and then I pushed it in development. So the push helped to bring up the contrast. But you can see in the frontier, it still left my um, blacks a little bit above click point. So let's compensate for that. Let's just fix that one real quick. Bring that all the way down. And that gave me a normal range of tones, um, a nice anchor. Uh, I think that it probably blocked up the shadows a little bit more than I would like. So in that in this case, now I would just kind of bump up my shadow recovery a little bit. I think 25 is as far as I would go. You'll notice when you go too far, it just gets really nasty. So don't uh, push it, I guess I would say. <laughs> um, but that was like a two click edit. You know, you'll notice how quickly this goes once you start getting into it. Here's another really underexposed image, but easy to fix. Just find your anchor point and then maybe bring up the whites a little bit and then I might in an image like this add 15 points of micro contrast get a little bit of snap now this is a much more modern lens um, so it's gonna have more snap built into it uh, so it didn't really need that as much Let's just do five points of clarity yeah that's fine let's look at our before and after look at these kind of lifeless blacks versus a true black over here um, if I were to reshoot this, I might expose more because, it, again, it is pretty underexposed. Um, but, you know, this is pretty representative of looking up through light coming through trees in the forest. So I think this, this, this works. Um, let's try exposure and just see what happens. See, you almost can't go anywhere without the exposure just kind of ruining this image. I'm at half a stop, and I already think it makes it totally lifeless and blah over here or totally too dark over here. So, again, just... You don't need to touch it as much. Okay, uh, let's try just a few more, just to kind of hammer this home. Let's try one where we might have to adjust the color a little bit. So here's a nice picture of Shea. Um, I can see that immediately that it's a little bit red and a little bit dull. So let's fix both of those things. Again, we'll start with the whites and the blacks. Bring those to their clip points. Bring those to their clip points. Now let's fix the white, or the, the color cast. Um, so, You'll see that there's no red here, but um, we can subtract red by just subtracting these in equal amounts. So let's go negative five each. That helped a little bit. Let's see if we can go a little further. Seven, seven. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. Bring up the. Okay, they didn't. They weren't subtracted equally, but um, it definitely brought the red out. Now, um, in an image like this, I have a great Pyrenees. He's very white. We want to fix him. He's 90, reading 95%, 96% at his hottest. Um, and in, in, in a situation like this, you're not, you, you don't want to fix it globally. You do want to bring in the magic wand and just kind of uh, burn him in a little bit. You can go way too far here and just kind of make them all weird and grayed out. Don't do that. 
let his brilliance remain. And yeah, that's, uh, that looks good. Well, what are we reading now? If we close that out. Yeah, about 91, 88, 89. That, that, that's good. He, he reads the way that you would kind of visually expect to see him. Okay, so let's do the before and after. Totally different. We just fixed the color by subtle color adjustments here. We took the red right out, uh, left it a little cool, and made the blacks a little bit more vibrant. Let's just do one more image to kind of uh, finish this off. This is, yeah, this is one that uh, you might say certainly looks fine as it is, but I can still see the kind of lifeless blacks here. So let's bring that down and we'll bring it up a little bit. And this is just the kind of tiny little things I would do, just nudging it into a finished position, um, into a finished state before I post it on Instagram or my website. Uh, it doesn't take much. And there you got a finished file. So anyway, I hope these edits were helpful. Um, keep shooting film and let me know if you have any questions at all. All right, that was easy. Thanks for watching, guys. Um, again, this is my new YouTube channel. So if you want to subscribe, that would really help me out. But more than that, if you just want to send me film or tell people who are interested in finding a new film lab about Northeast Photographic, that would be amazing. We are still a really small lab. All we are interested in doing is growing and growing and growing to the point where we can open up a commercial space in one of the nearby towns and really start broader uh, services towards the community. Uh, I'm going to be doing a lot of exciting stuff in 2020 and towards the end of the year to launch new services. Um, that's going to affect large format. I'm hoping to get printing running soon. Printing is really complicated, so sorry about the delay on that. I know I've teased that on the podcast. But again, there's, there's a bunch of different inter ways to interact with Northeast Photographic. You can listen to our podcast, which again is called Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark Room. You can subscribe to our Instagram, which is at Northeast Photographic. Um, and you can message us on Instagram. You can go to our website or email us. You can comment here on YouTube. And we'll try to get back to you as soon as we can. We are a busy lab. Labs take up a lot of work, a lot of time. Um, and, uh, but we'll be, we'll, we, we, you know, we're here to help you guys to answer, you, answer questions, to um, kind of encourage the use of film in any way that we can. And the best way that we can do that is to enable you guys to get the best results from your film so you're always happy and not frustrated, which is always good. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. We'll be back as soon as possible with another video.